government adopts stringent, proactive measures amid concerns over Omicron. Covid vaccine makers modifying shots as more variants emerge. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. You're watching Updates at Noon with me. I'm Jessica Lee. International tourists participating in the Langkawi tourism bubble and travellers arriving from all countries must undergo additional COVID-19 detection tests, namely on the third and fifth day from the date of arrival with professional RTK AG testing. Now, as an additional preventive measure, Health Minister Kari Jamaluddin said travellers arriving from high-risk countries at the international checkpoints in Kuala Lumpur International Airport, KLIA, would be required to wear a digital tracker device during the order for supervision and observation period or quarantine. Elaborating further on the matter, Kyrie said a list of high-risk countries would be provided by MOH through risk evaluations. He said the people need not panic at the emergence of the Omicron variant in the country because COVID-19 preventive measures enforced currently were seen as effective to prevent the spread of the pandemic. The health minister noted that other countries which have started to tighten their measures due to Omicron are actually implementing what Malaysia has implemented. He added that Malaysia are among among the most careful countries in terms of prevention as the countries still have quarantine, wearing face masks, contact tracing system, among others, which is quite thorough. Now, Kairi also encouraged the people to continue practicing test, report, isolate, inform and seek or TRIS and obtain COVID-19 vaccinations. Now, following the first case of the new COVID-19 Omicron variant reported in the country, citizens in two states have been urged to remain vigilant and increase compliance with standard operating procedures to avoid being infected. In Pulau Pinang, the state government is asking 503,000 frontline workers, senior citizens and individuals with comorbidities to immediately get booster shots at all vaccination centres, PPVs, in the state. Pulau Pinang Agro-Technology and Food Safety, Rural Development and Health Committee Chairman Dr. Norlela Arifin said although the state had achieved an adult vaccination rate of 101.3%, the spread of Omicron should not be taken lightly by the people. She said people should continue to maintain SOPs and take booster shots to increase personal protection to curb COVID-19 Category 3, 4 and 5 cases that require treatment in hospitals and intensive care units, ICUs. In Perak, State Health, Science, Environment and Green Technology Committee Chairman Mohamed Akmal Kamarudin asked the people of the state to always practice self-care and avoid being in crowded places. He urged the public to avoid crowded places, always wear a face mask and wash their hands, often as a precaution. Meanwhile, in Kedah, an additional COVID-19 detection test for travellers arriving in Langkawi via the Langkawi International Tourism Travel Bubble will ensure that the resort island is free of the Omicron variant. The Langkawi Development Authority, or LADA, in a statement said they welcome the additional steps taken by the health ministry to screen tourists entering Langkawi under the Langkawi International Tourism Travel Bubble program. Sokola Sri Putri in Sabajaya has been ordered to close temporarily following 135 new positive COVID-19 cases involving the school. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nohisham Abdullah said the order was issued under Section 18 of the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act 1988 or Act 342 for sanitization and disinfection. The Health Director General, through a statement release, said the COVID-19 cluster involving Skolasri Putri Saibajaya was named Persiaran Tasik Cluster. 
He said as of yesterday, 973 school residents have been screened and 135 new cases were detected in the cluster, bringing the overall COVID-19 cases in the cluster to 143 people, comprising 114 students, 19 teachers and 10 school employees. Health Minister Kari Jamaluddin on Thursday announced 73 new cases involving two teachers and 71 students. Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham noted that a briefing for the Parent Teacher Association of the school was held while continuous monitoring would go on to ensure the cluster is contained. He said from the 143 COVID-19 positive cases, 106 cases were in Category 1, while 35 cases were in Category 2A and two cases in Category 2B, which comprise one teacher and a student, and all are in stable condition. The health DG added that all infected students and a teacher were admitted to MyApps for further treatment and monitoring. Meanwhile, a total of 24 students of Maktab Mahmud Sikh in Taman Pelangi Jaya near Sikh Kada were confirmed positive for COVID-19. State Health and Local Government Committee Chairman Datuk Dr. Muhammad Hayati Osman said the State Health Department, or GKN, had reported a new educational institution cluster known as Dah Pelangi Cluster. Datuk Dr. Muhammad Hayati said as of 12 noon yesterday, 38 individuals were screened and 24 were found positive and 14 negative. He said the management of the school had conducted targeted screenings on the students and the cases started registering positive COVID-19 yesterday. The cause of the infection is still being investigated by the Sikh District Health Department, PKD, and they have implemented isolation and observation on the positive cases while identifying close contacts have been ordered quarantined. The state exco added that a notice on the closure of the school has also been issued effective yesterday until sanitization work to disinfect the premise is completed. Meanwhile, Datuk Dr. Mohamad Hayati urged the public, especially the management of the school, to continue complying with the standard operating procedures SOPs outlined by the government. The Defence Ministry or MINDEF is leaving the decision to the Health Ministry or MOH on whether to allow or otherwise the holding of 2022 Defence Services Asia DSA exhibition and 2022 National Security Asia or NETSEC international exhibitions in March if the COVID-19 Omicron variant cases go up in the country. The Senior Defence Minister, Dr. Sri Shamuddin Tun Hussein, said currently MINDEF still did not know yet the details concerning the variant and its effects on those infected and those who were vaccinated. Elaborating further, Dr. Sri Shamuddin said MINDEF would channel to MOH if it obtained any detailed information on the variant. But kita dah beri mandate, mandat kepada uh, YBKJ untuk membuat pengumuman-pengumuman tanpa uh, merujuk kepada masyarakat uh, kotet berhubung kait dengan uh, Omicron eh, dan uh, untuk kita bawa pula ke persidangan khas yang di, dipengurusikan oleh Yang Amat Berhormat Perdana Menteri. The minister added that this is because the proliferation and development of Omicron is very fast and actually there is no waiting time for a meeting. He said since it is on the issue of health, MINDEF will leave it to the health ministry to make the announcement regarding the events. In addition, Dr. Sri Shamuddin also expressed the hope to hold the Langkawi International Maritime and Aerospace Exhibition or Lima 23, but currently the focus was given to 2022 DSA and NETSEC first. The government has decided that the policy of 1% employment opportunity in the public service for persons with disabilities or OKU to be made a key performance indicator or KPI for all ministries and that it should be achieved by the end of 2022. Prime Minister Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said a decision was made as the policy had not achieved its target so far. 
Commenting further on the matter, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said in Budget 2022, opportunities were made available for young OKUs to be hired through the Malaysia Short-Term Employment Programme or MySTEP scheme, which offers 80,000 job opportunities on contract basis, comprising 50,000 jobs in the public sector and 30,000 in the government-linked companies starting January 2022. He said this effort and determination will help the policy of 1% OKU in the public sector to be achieved faster. The Premier also noted that the government had never marginalised the OKU but had always recognised their roles and importance, especially in the Keluarga Malaysia agenda. The government, he said, had also realised that over the past two years, the people had been burdened by the threats of COVID-19 and the PWD were among the most affected group of all. Hence, apart from calling on the OKU to be ready to enter the endemic phase, he said the government would always provide help and support for the OKU to remain strong, resilient and flexible to adapt to the new norm. Malaysia's digital economy growth is gaining traction with e-commerce income rising close to 190 billion US dollars, an increase of 23% for the first nine months of this year compared to the same period last year. Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz said digitalization has always been of strategic importance to Malaysia as it seeks inclusive and sustainable economic growth. In 2020, Malaysia's digital economy made up 22% of gross domestic product and is expected to generate around 500,000 jobs by 2025. In line with this, he said Malaysia has also seen digital payment solutions grow significantly last year with a 664% increase in merchant registration. Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul also acknowledged that although no countries have been spared from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, advances in digital readiness and the far-reaching impact of technology have enabled Malaysia to better mitigate the more severe effects of the lockdowns and prevent more permanent economic scarring. However, he said there is still much room for improvement and that the government remains committed to further digitalization of the economy, noting that Malaysia has launched a digital economy blueprint to empower Malaysians in all walks of life with digital literacy, high-value job creations, fintech education and healthcare. The blueprint, which is a long-term plan until 2030, is to be implemented in three phases and will include investments in digital framework, telco strengthening activity, 5G rollout nationwide, strengthening cloud service provider, with all to cost $15 billion. For a segment, UK study finds mRNA vaccines provide biggest booster impact. Coming up in sport, clubs allowed to proceed with naturalization of players. The Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources, or KETSA, yesterday signed a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with the Football Association of Malaysia, or FAM, to enhance conservation efforts for the Malayan Tigers through Save the Malayan Tigers campaign. Its Minister, Datuk Sri Takiuddin Hassan, said the campaign is one of KETSA's targets under its 100 Days Keluarga Malaysia aspirations. Datuk Sri Takiuddin said the memorandum is aimed at ensuring that the Malayan tiger species, which is a symbol of the national coat of arms and synonymous with the national football team, will not become extinct. The minister and FAM president Datuk Hamidin Muhammad Amin witnessed the MOU signing ceremony between the Department of Wildlife and National Parks Perhilitan and FAM. Meanwhile, Datu Hamidin said the strategic cooperation between the Football Association and Perhilitan would intensify efforts to save the species that signifies courage, might and strength, which also represents the national football team. 
He said nobody would want the symbol of might and the source of inspiration for the national team to disappear over time and added that this commitment would also raise public awareness on wildlife conservation efforts. On another matter, Datu Hamidin said FAM will not stop any clubs in the Malaysia League or M League if they want to naturalise their players. Datu Hamidin said even though the association is suspending the naturalisation of players in the national team, clubs in the M League can still proceed with their intentions provided they fulfil the requirements. Kita nak melihat dia punya kebersihan dia untuk masa akan datang. Jadi pada masa sekarang kalau mana-mana kelab untuk nak menaturalisasi pemain terpulang pada mereka. Akan... Karena pemain-pemain ini dia akan bermain untuk kelab. Melainkan uh, sebelum ni atas dasar untuk bermain untuk pasukan kebangsaan. Jadi kita kita biarkan pada mereka sama dengan mereka ingin nak menaturalisasi pemain. Local media reports recently that 2021 Malaysia Cup champions Kuala Lumpur City FC intend to naturalise Colombian striker Romel Morales when he meets the five-year requirement to play in the M League in 2022, while Sri Pahang FC is said to be in the process of naturalising Lee Tuck of England. The Football Association of Malaysia, or FAM, Deputy President Dato Muhammad Yusuf Mahdi admitted that the preparation of the national squad this time was slightly affected due to the tight Malaysia Cup schedule that saw all the players called to the training camp only recently after the final involving KL City and JDT on Tuesday. However, Dato Muhammad Yusuf, who is also Harimau Malaya team manager, stressed that it was not an excuse for players not to perform their best in Singapore. He also demanded that players emulate the spirit of KL City players who surprised the favourites and defending champions JDT 2-0 in the Malaysia Cup final because he believes it is not impossible to create success if players are highly motivated in a competition. Semangat ingin menang tu lebih penting uh, daripada uh, proses persediaan. Uh, apabila sebab kita rata-rata player ini memang apa player yang terbaik ada dalam uh, negara kita cuma dikumpulkan di, bersama. Jadi saya kira semangat bermain bersama sebagai satu pasukan dan semangat ingin menang itu akan uh, menentukan sama ada kita uh, mampu atau tak mampu untuk memenangi sesuatu perlawanan. After the action against Cambodia, Malaysia, who were the 2010 champions, will meet Laos on the 9th of December, followed by Vietnam on the 12th of December and Indonesia on the 19th of December in the mission to meet the target of reaching the final for the second time in a row. That's it from us this afternoon. In our top story, COVID vaccine makers modifying shots as more variants emerge. Tune in to News at 10, coming up at 10 p.m. on Solar and Brita RTM on My Free Views Channel 123. You can also stream the news by surfing RTM Click. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Jessica Lee. See you later.